All right, everybody, welcome to the Pro Zone. This is your host, Rick Del Santo, and joining me, a very special guest, Jonathan Peck. John, hello. Hey, how you doing, Rick? Hello, everyone. All right, if uh, John is a very longtime friend of mine and also a gigantic wrestling fan, and now we get to sit around and talk this weekend's WrestleMania. I just have to uh, dispute one thing. I'm not gigantic. I'm only 5'8". <laughs> <Five eight. laughs> but so is Otis. <laughs> So is Otis, right? There you go. They say he's five ten, but so that in wrestling terms, he's probably really five eight. But they say That's he's right. three hundred thirty pounds, so he beat me yeah. to it. He's a bigger, he's a bigger they wrestling just, man. They usually add, like, they usually add thirty forty pounds. You're right. All right. So, what did you overall before we get into it? Like, what did you think of the show? Did you watch the pre-show at all? Uh, I, I generally don't watch pre-shows, uh, right. especially now I've been working like crazy, so I really don't have time. Unless I'm actually home while it's going on, Right. you know, I'm the type of person, just whatever I go on, I click, whatever is part of the main event is what I watch. I really don't have time to even, even search for anything nowadays to, to do that. Yeah, so I, watch I, don't, I don't, like, really get into them, because usually there's, like... Uh... It's not necessarily anything interesting anyways, but this match I was particularly interested in was Cesaro and Drew Gulak, which I thought it was, um, you know, uh, two of them are my my favorites. Yeah, they're both really great. And um, so you missed that one, I'm assuming. I heard it was a short match, too. That was the other thing. I heard it was very short, so I'm just like, oh, then, well, I'm not missing anything. Yeah, uh, it was good for what it was. You know, Cesaro yeah. beat Drew Lack. He uh, comes out wearing the uh, – re- what I really liked part of Cesaro's set now is he um, – his outfit is he has a track jacket with the uh, the wrestling purist track jacket. I actually bought okay. the T-shirt, but now I saw the track jacket. Now I'm going to go on WWE Shop and buy that as well because that's – it just looked awesome. I hope it comes – it only comes in white, I think. I'm not sure. I don't really – Okay, I got to take a look at it. Yeah, it looks awesome. But – um. Oh, uh, all right. The the show started with the uh, the women's world tag team championships. Uh, it was Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. They beat the yes. Kabuki Warriors for the women's tag team title. What did you th- What did you think of this match? I thought it went way too long. I was losing yeah. interest after a while. That was a. This is one of those ones that should have been short and quick, and it just it just seems like it just right. kept going on forever. In my opinion, that that was my main issue with it. Right. I, I really honestly can believe that they gave the titles to Alexa Bliss and uh, Nikki Cross. I, re- I mean, I like uh, Nikki Cross, but Alexa Bliss. Uh, oh, Alexa she's better... Bliss, she's eye candy. That's I mean, she's exactly. a good athlete, but she's not really a good wrestler. She, you know, she's Ex- a, she's good on the mic. And, and you know, she's right. that, that's that's what the main thing is with her. Right. And I love Asuka. Like, I think she's really awesome. Oh, she's and... great. I mean, I can't yeah. understand what she's saying, but you still pay attention to her. <laughs> That's right. the thing. And, and she's just and she puts on some of the best matches on the show. No, no, no. Uh, Very good. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much that. I mean, other than that, I didn't really have much else to say about that because it's you know, it was better than I thought it was gonna be, but like you said, it I just long. yeah, I just think for an opener they should have just kind of done something more high energy quick, you know, instead of right. just something kind of like more slow and plodding, you know. Yeah. Especially yeah. with no crowd there. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's very difficult for them these days to keep people interested in the television show, seeing that uh, there's no fans in the crowd. You know, it's it's easier. For some reason, AEW is doing something different where they're putting a few of the wrestlers in the crowd, and it seems to work Everyone really know, well. That's the thing. Everyone I know, even people who aren't even really fans of AEW, like big fans or preferred WWE, you're saying mm-hmm. they enjoy – watching dynamite because it, it actually still feels like a normal wrestling show where raw and smackdown right, and exactly and yeah and then and then the thing with like raw and excuse me smackdown is they're they're showing a lot of highlight matches it seems like like uh you know the yeah. Royal rumble from this year mania matches but you know and then it's just like they're showing only like two matches two fresh matches uh, and that's kind of like irritating but i mean i you know they have time like three hours to fill up on monday time. yeah yeah, they have a three hours one night, two hours another, and, and you know it's it's a little ridiculous. But you know, yeah, the smart thing that AEW is doing is a lot of pre tape stuff, you right? Know, and I the, think the, that's, and, and you know things of that nature, you know, and, right? Uh, and I think WWE is starting to do that with uh, you know the with Raw and SmackDown as well. They're starting to do stuff. I, I from what I understand, I was talking to somebody today, 
And they have uh, a bunch of stuff this week planned to go uh, ahead for, apparently they're doing a month's worth of recordings this week. That's just what I heard. I don't know how okay. true that is, but you know. Makes sense. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. So just get the can and while everybody's there. Get it right. Up. Right. Now the second match, uh, this was one I was not looking forward at all. I could not, <laughs> I really I cannot stomach. <laughs> I mean, people say this gentleman does, is a, a great heel because you know you naturally hate him. No, I just fucking he, hate the guy. He is, He's he annoying. Is, he is great because you, you're not saying like, eh, I don't care about him. You're like, no, I can't. Right. Like, an opinion that that's the main thing is right. you actually have an opinion right so that's important so i guess that counts right that counts for something baron corbin he lost to uh elias via roll-up uh it was just ridiculous you know it was just elias it, it's better than i expected <laughs> the, the, the right, match was right. better, like I'll, I'll say that you know because i really think elias he's one of those guys who's just all gimmick and he's kind of mediocre in the ring so it was right. better See, than- i don't with him right yeah i mean i, I kind of like him better as a heel uh as a baby face i don't think it's going to be uh, i don't think it's going to work i just think he's going to be doing a lot of yeah, jobs as a, more, as a baby yeah, face he's more, yeah he's more natural as a heel right uh, right especially when he does the longs you know where he sings to the crowd right. where he, like whatever town he's in now is it me yeah. or did he look like randy savage in this match Oh yeah, the beard does it, you know. And then I mean, the right. man bun doesn't help when he puts the hair. He's up wearing like an orange thing. shirt, right? Yeah, and the, yeah. The bandana around his head. Uh, it looked like right. him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Becky Lynch, she, uh, of course, she kept the women's title against Shayna Baszler. This match kind of pissed me off. I thought it was, you know, I uh, I hated the ending of it, and I really thought that they were like grooming Shayna Baszler to this be is the woman's the thing. champion. This is a time where, you know, whatever their plans were, yeah, it, it really none right. of that means anything right now because of the, right. the state of the world and now. So there is no crowd or anything of that nature live, or you have to worry about their reactions. But I think this is the time where they should have just had Shayna Baszler just annihilate her, probably like just That's almost exactly. a squash match, just annihilate right. her to get people to start talking. Say, oh wait, who is this girl? People who don't really pay attention exactly. to much. Right? watching i think that would have been a smarter thing to do not a lot of people watch nxt that watch raw and smackdown it's like it's mm-hmm. two different shows you know what i mean it's yeah. like watching wcw versus wwf in a way even though it's the same company there's a lot of people just like oh i don't watch oh, NXT. Yeah. that that they'll watch raw and smackdown and they think it's the greatest you know what i mean it's just like it's you know nxt is where the talent is Shayna baszler was the champion there forever and she just, like you said, she should have came in and annihilated her, choked her out or whatever. And because they built it's up for it for so long. Nobody yeah. would say, oh, that doesn't make sense. They would say, oh, okay, well, this actually makes sense with her background, you know? Right, right. But like you said, they're probably in the state of the world is in. A lot of plans probably changed. You know, obviously, plans changed a lot for this, uh, for the show. As you see, a lot of the matches were changed uh, within a week of the show, the show actually happening, such as like the main event and the tag title match. So mm-hmm. a lot of people weren't able to make it. And oh, then, yeah. You know. no, but I didn't want to cut you off, but did you know, it was a very, uh, I think the intro was really good that they had all the, the, the video and the production done uh, for the, that whole opening, the whole pirate thing, because it's right. supposed to be in Tampa and it still had Roman Reigns in there. So they weren't going to invest in getting rid of him <laughs> in the opening video, if you know. Right. Yeah. No. Please. Yeah. I did see that. But one of the things is like, you know, Friday, I think uh, before SmackDown, I actually watched Ron SmackDown last week, which I never am able to make it into the mm-hmm. shows. And they, you know, earlier in the day, uh, Triple H said, oh, we got an interesting story that that's how we're going to write uh, uh, Roman Reigns out of the main event. And then I so I'm like, all right, I'll just watch SmackDown. And they didn't even mention it at all. They, they, they were still talking about Goldberg and Roman Reigns until Sunday. And then it was just like, oh, yeah, Braun Strowman's in the match. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are, well, not a huge amount of people, but there are some people right. who do like Roman. He's not over like they want him to be, but there's, I'm sure mm-hmm. there were some that don't follow closely that were expecting to see him and didn't see him, you know? Right. People that wouldn't know, uh, you know, but I mean, in seriousness, him taking, you know, uh, considering just not traveling because he is immune to, uh, uh, susceptible, you know, no, uh, that, that I completely understand, but completely this is understand. Yeah. I, I don't, I didn't talk to you about this, but this right. is my opinion on that. Cause when that came out that he said he doesn't want to wrestle for that reason, 
I understand right. it, but I totally what I yeah. think they should have done just to, to make it more realistic is say, okay, well, you lost via forfeit, and then set up a different that, match. That you know, that's that's very old school, and I would like you know that would have been more realistic and more old school, but. We know WWE does not like to to do stuff like that forfeit yeah. matches. I, I don't remember the last time uh, somebody won by forfeit. Who was it? Sherry Martel against Sapphire in SummerSlam, right? <laughs> That's the last forfeit. But, but it would have been nice if they did something like that, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Either way, that that um, that match, you know, whatever. That I, I wasn't looking forward to that. But that's we'll get to that. Um, what did you watch? Did you enjoy the Intercontinental Title match, Sami Zayn and uh, Daniel Bryan? It wasn't bad. It was another yeah. one that didn't go very long. Yeah, I mean, considering the two guys that that are in it, they're uh, you know, those guys can go for a while. They're they're, they're two great talents. I think right now, Sami Zayn's got to be one of my favorite people uh, on the mic. Going and you know, he I think he's he's good. hilarious. He's hilarious, and you know, and it's like. Um, I don't know. Daniel Bryan has a very strange WrestleMania history. Last year, he lost the world title. You know, he's had this whole world title history. Now he's fighting for the Intercontinental title. I thought it was a good match, though, uh, overall. And I and, just, and you did you like Gronk uh, dancing in the I, background before I, they came out? Too? I'm going to say this. Pardon my pardon my language, everybody, while I say this, but fuck that guy. He is annoying. <laughs> so, With the zoom he, eyes, the, the, right. what's the clown's yeah. name? Uh, he doesn't have the blue eye. He doesn't have that blue makeup on his face anymore, though. Uh, like, no. you remember that gimmick? Um, no, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, wait. <laughs> What's his I name? Then? You're on a blank. Um, not um. Oh, what the hell's the guy's name? Not the AEW guy you're referring to. No, 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 no. The the guy uh, who's with Gronk uh, that's co-hosting. With oh, him, I have. Uh, you know oh, what I'm talking crap. about? He's a wrestler. But yeah. I'm drawing a blank with his name. I'm okay, trying to remember. Not, yeah, I'm. It, don't that's remember. how that's how relevant he is as a wrestler and a talent. Yeah, you can't okay. think, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, yes, but with Sami Zayn, I still don't understand this Fidel Castro look he has when he comes out. You know, do you understand? Uh, I was or? like, like what, like that was. Yeah, I was thrown off. Like all of a sudden, he's wearing like the hat and like the the. The military pants. I'm yeah, like, I, I, I don't know where that came from. The last match I saw that of his, you know, because um, he actually was wearing tights. I'm just, it's just very bizarre. I don't yeah. know. It was, yeah. So <laughs> I was thrown off a bit because that's actually the first match of his I've seen in a few months. But like I said, I don't keep up as much on the on the, that show yeah. as I should. As I should. But yeah, overall, I thought that was a pretty decent match. That one was too short. Uh, which that one, if any match was going to go long that night, it should have been that match because yeah. of the two, the talent of the two gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And of course the match on a pre-show, you know, every other match could have just been a squash. Yeah. So, all right. The SmackDown tag team title, Kofi and Jimmy Uso and John Morrison. It was a three way, which again was supposed to be a tag team ladder match for the SmackDown. Miz says that he doesn't want to show up. He doesn't want to travel or something. Apparently, he didn't want to be a part of it or, or travel. Rather. I'm guessing because he has all children at home. And you're right. right. I mean, that he's yeah. actually did anything. Doesn't want to bring on. Right. I mean, yeah. He's yeah he's that's, just, right. He has a baby, so that's that's yeah, probably. He doesn't want to. Um, I thought this match was terrible. Um, <laughs> to be honest, it, it, I'm sitting, I, it went I, on. It went on too long. It's, I mean, there's a few good spots in there, but yeah, but you're right. right. It's kind of like another one of those things. It's like I, I after after a certain period of time, I just lost interest. Right. 